Coming up the news tonight, FNM Senator Dr. Dwayne Sands says that Black Friday March showed the seething resentment felt by the Bahamian electorate. This as March organizers Renard Hanfield is accusing some politicians of using the march for political gain. One FNM candidate's call for more reliable and affordable energy. Plus, we've got the highlights from Grand Bahama's Festival Noel event. Welcome to Our News. I'm Dana Smith. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, that massive Black Friday march down Bay Street shows the frustration, anger, and seething resentment felt by the Bahamian electorate about politicians. And those in power need to sit up and take note. This according to FNM Senator and noted surgeon Dr. Dwayne Sands, who said having elected an absolutely incompetent government, it's clear the people want change and politicians need to take note of the sentiment of voters. I think a new day has dawned in Bahamian politics. Sands said voters may have been upset with the FNM prior to the 2012 general election, but it seems they have now doubled down on their anger and now have the greatest example of political remorse of any political electorate ever. The mood, I believe, of this Black Friday march captured a real frustration, an anger, a seething resentment of the dismissive contempt shown to Bahamians by politicians. And although that anger may be primarily directed at government politicians, Sand said it also falls on any incumbent. But despite this, many familiar political faces were spotted in the crowd. Asked about this, Sand said given protesters were voicing their dissatisfaction with the state of the country, he found the presence of some politicians on the march absurd. This don't make no kind of sense. I mean, one of the demands was for the resignation of the Minister of Education. So for him in particular to be there didn't make any sense to me. Um, but many of the government uh, ministers were in the crowd protesting themselves. Now, if that is not absurd. I don't know what is. Sands added, all politicians, regardless of their political affiliation, have something they can learn from the massive march down Bay Street, and he warned the event should not be politicized. And the lead organizer of the We March Bahamas protest, Renard Henfield, is hitting out at some politicians who he claimed used last Friday's massive protest for political gain. Our Jasmine Brown has his candid comments in this report. When the march was first announced, Hanfield had made it clear that politicians were not invited. However, several PLP, FNM and DNA candidates showed up for the march. Hanfield says he relaxed his position, but it did not come without stipulations. I initially said that I didn't want any politicians involved. And every organization reached out and it made it. I guess, as to use Fred Mitchell's words, everyone went in a tizzy. And I'd appreciate that everyone, regardless of their political affiliation, is a Bahamian. And I want to bridge divides, but I would have said to them, I don't want politicians doing interviews. I don't want politicians wearing their party paraphernalia. But that did not stop politicians like FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, DNA leader Branville McCartney, and several PLP MPs from addressing the media during the march. Henfield says he was disappointed that those politicians would make the march about them and not the concerns of the people. Henfield says he believes many of the politicians only participated after they saw the buzz surrounding the march. Once they realized the momentum and how many people were standing up, they quickly adorned their black attire. And you can tell the sincerity of it because they never, not one of them had a We March shirt. If they were in support of the people, I think those persons would have had a We March shirt like the rest of us, like the thousands of us. But instead, at the ninth hour, they went in their closets and picked out something black to say that I stand with the people. Field went on to question their motives. I saw it for what it was. They're political, political opportunists and they wanted to stand on that side of the people at the ninth hour. But these are people who have voted against the will of the people for quite some time now. These are people who have ignored us, who have disrespected us, and who have basically told us, you don't need to see where the money goes. You don't need to understand or see the deals we've made. We will do as we see fit. We don't need to hear from you. 
Um, so to see them at the ninth hour, I thought was humorous. I pity them. You know, I pity them. These are people who are fighting for their seats. The march came weeks after a letter was issued to the government outlining a number of demands on November 9th. A second letter was issued to the Prime Minister on Thursday, indicating that organizers are prepared to initiate a national strike in one week should the PM not publicly address the nation on what he has done since Black Friday to advance these issues that affect the people of the Bahamas. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Minister of the Environment Kenrit Dorsett says while he participated in last Friday's We March Bahamas protest, he believes many of the points being raised were unnecessary. In fact, Dorsett, who says he attended the march because of his deep love for the Bahamas, says several issues raised about his own ministry have been or are in the process of being addressed. And so what they have asked for has either already been done or is in train in terms of IRCA now finalizing their review of the RESG program and making it a reality. So I just wanted to use the statement as an opportunity to ensure that uh, the leaders and also the Bahamian public who would have read the letter that they issued to the Prime Minister are aware of the fact that when it comes to renewables, what they say they seek to do has already been done. Organizers and participants called for a policy for renewable energy, affordable power, cleaner air and stronger environmental practices. Dorset says the national energy policy maps the way to reducing energy penetration by 3 percent by 2033. A national dialogue has begun on the matter. The fact is we have both. The Electricity Act was amended last year. Uh, to make renewable energy legal in the country, to make provision for interconnection to the grid, uh, to make provision for independent power producers, and it also created IRCA as the independent regulator for the electricity sector. In addition to that, we've issued the National Energy Policy, which speaks to a minimum of 30% of our energy matrix being by way of renewables by the year 2033. In other news tonight, police in Grand Bahama need the public's help in locating two wanted men. The first is Ricardo Quincy Jones Jr. He's described as a medium brown man with an average build, standing at about 5 foot 10 inches tall and weighing about 170 pounds. The second suspect is D'Angelo Dean, also known as D.D. Dean is described as a medium brown man with an average build, standing at about 6 feet in height and weighing 200 pounds. Police are asking anyone with any information as to the whereabouts of either of these men to contact police in Grand Bahama at telephone number 350-3107 through 12 or call police at 911 or 919 or call or visit your nearest police station. Well, on the heels of a major Bahamas power and light meltdown and rolling blackouts last week, a Free National Movement candidate says the time has come for Bahamians to demand reliable and affordable energy. Christina McNeil reports. Mount Moriah candidate Marvin Dames says he's not an energy expert, but he can see that there is a problem in the country. Our news spoke to him outside the Free National Movement headquarters earlier this week during a power outage where he said the time has come for answers and change. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, I mean, we have a problem. Uh, you mentioned the fact now that we're, we're standing out here uh, and the reason why we're standing out here is because where we don't have any electricity. Um, I was at home last night and bam, the lights went out. Um, and this is, this, is, this is becoming a reoccurring problem. Um, I don't have the history behind why it, it continues to happen, but obviously it points to the fact that we are in the midst of a problem. On Friday, former State Minister for the Environment Fenton Nemore told our news that the country is in the midst of an energy crisis. Dames agrees. Have to find ways, right, to keep the light on. Um, we have to look for alternative sources of energy um, because people continue to co complain uh, of high energy cost when other countries are looking for alternative solutions to reduce the cost uh, of electricity bills. Dame says Bahamians have been plagued by blackouts and load shedding for decades. He says as a country that considers itself a modern hub for business, Bahamians are desperate for change. You know, and we have to certainly hear from the government. 
we have to hear from BPL as to what is the strategy in the foreseeable future that will that will get us out of this problem of constant incessant you know blackouts you know uh, it's 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 insane you know and you cannot you cannot run a country when you know the lights there's no guarantee that you know you're going to have power Dame says the FNM will release a plan for energy in the country, one that lays out the path toward reliable and affordable energy for all. And I assure you that when our leader releases our platform, um, the whole question of how we deal with, with, with our energy um, solutions moving forward, you're going to find that they're going to be very groundbreaking, very interesting, and it will bring relief relief in high energy cost and relief in, in blackouts. Reporting for Our News, I'm Christina McNeil. When Our News returns, the president of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union says while BPL is doing what it can to ensure reliable energy, there are several challenges. Stay tuned.